Hi everybody and welcome to this presentation today on the Cisco 8800 series phones and its interoperability with the Vodia IP PBX phone system. We appreciate everybody joining today and it's going to be a brief presentation just talking about the Cisco phones uh, and how they're set up on the Vodia system. So we're real excited about this, this partnership. Um, we feel Cisco phones are, are top notch. It's a name that everybody knows love to have on their desk so this is another tool to add to your tool belt uh, in selling the Vodia systems is that we can support these Cisco phones. Uh, I hope everybody can hear me okay. Um, you are all muted but if, if you're having any difficulty with the audio uh, please go ahead and uh, send a chat message uh, through the Join Me app. All right. So what's a multi-platform phone? These are multi-platform phones, and that's a simple uh, answer. Basically, they, they will work on multiple platforms. Um, you know, the only one that you need to be concerned about is the Vodia platform, um, and that's uh, what we're talking about today, is that these Cisco phones will work on this, they will work on other systems as well, and they've made these uh, phones to be multi-platform so that they can work on uh, different types of systems. But again, main point here is uh, they work on the Vodia system and they work like a charm. So here are the uh, some of the product line overview uh, here for the Cisco phones. You've got your basic Cisco phones, it's the 6800 series and the 7800 series, some pictures of those. Uh, there is a conference phone as well. Uh, the advanced phones, the 8800 series, are the ones we're talking about today, uh, the ones that we support. Uh, we also support uh, the ATAs, Cisco ATAs, those can be used as well. And on some of the uh, advanced 8800 series phones, you can add some uh, key expansion modules. So for, uh, you know, extra BLF keys and all that. So the 8800 series is a great fit for businesses of all sizes. Um, we feel that, you know, the Cisco name automatically makes you seem like potentially a bigger business, but you know, that's the whole idea here is that you can have these Cisco phones on, on some, somebody's desk. Um, their company may not be huge or Cisco-like, um, but they've got the Cisco phone. So it's a great fit for any business, any size. They've got a five inch high resolution color display. So beautiful phone uh, as far as pictures go and all of that. Uh, on all these phones, you've got the crystal clear wideband audio. So on all models that's available, uh, as well as wideband headset support. Uh, they're all PoE, a um, couple of different classes of PoE, depending on which phone, and they're all gigabit Ethernet. Here's just a chart showing uh, some of these 8800 series phones and kind of what they have or don't have. Um, just to run through it, uh, the only one that's not color is the 8811. That is a grayscale, but the others are going to be color for you. Um, you've got uh, you know, the Ethernet switch, they're all gigabit, so you'll have that on, on all these phones. Ten programmable line keys and four function keys, again, available on all the phones, as well as the headset support is available on all, uh, all the phones. As far as those key expansion modules, uh, that's going to be the 8851 and up. Uh, the 8811 and 8841s cannot have a, a key expansion module attached to them. They're all full duplex speaker phones, all wideband audio. And as I mentioned earlier, the PoE class for the 8811 and 41 is two, um, and it's class four for the others, um, you know, the, the more advanced ones. And they all can be uh, wall mounted. So we're just going to go through, um, you know, setting this up on the uh, Vodia system. So we'll, we'll talk about the supported Cisco devices, logging into Vodia, powering up the device, creating an extension and assigning a button profile, and then LAN provisioning as well. So as far as which devices are supported, um, you can get to here through vodia.com slash en slash phones, uh, but the, it will tell you that as far as Cisco goes, we're supporting all these 8800 as well as some 7800 phone, series phones, as well as the SPA, the Cisco SPA series. Uh, they're all can be provisioned, LAN provisioned, all have encryption, buttons that can be uh, uh, profiled in there, uh, and they're all interrupted as far as SIP goes. So this is a basic, uh, basic. hopefully everybody on the call already knows how to do this, but this would be uh, getting onto your phone system. So on your web browser, you're going to 
type in the HTTPS colon slash slash local host, or you can put the IP of the machine. Uh, just so you all know, I mean, you do have to put that HTTPS in there. If you just type in local host, it will not connect. So you do need to put that in there. Uh, gonna go ahead and sign into the Vodafone system. By default, that is a username of admin and there's no password required. Um, obviously, that's something you should change going forward, um, but the initial sign-in is just gonna be admin with no password. If you have not licensed this product yet, uh, we encourage you to sign up and register with Vodia. So you can get there through vodia.com slash en slash register. Uh, again, if anybody's on this call and has not registered, please go there and register. We can get you a trial license so that you can you know, test this out, uh, test out your own scenarios. So you've logged in and now you're gonna power up the device. Now when the phone is operational, Bodhi is going to detect that device on the LAN. And you'll see that if you're in the administrator level, so not the domain level, but the administrator level, and you go to phones and LAN devices, you'll see here, configure phones in the LAN, and you should see any Cisco as well as any other phones that are recognized in the LAN. So now you want to create an extension. You're signed into the administrator console. You're gonna to go to localhost, or if you are using this as a multi-tenant system, you're gonna choose the domain where you're adding this phone. So if it's just single tenant system, it's localhost. If it's multi-tenant, that you're gonna choose which of those tenants you're gonna go ahead and assign this to. So now you're going into the domain section, not the admin section. And once you're there, you're gonna to go to uh, accounts, extensions, uh, click on add, uh, and create your first account. Um, basic uh, pop-up window here with the account name, which is gonna be the extension, first and last name, email addresses, cell phone number, and uh, some of these automatically generating the password and the web password uh, will be set up right there. Uh, supported buttons uh, in the Cisco series. So you've got your private lines. Um, so you can have, you know, line one, line two, however many lines you need. Uh, there is a MWI voicemail light on the phone, on the back of the phone, so that's gonna blink if you do have any voicemails. You can set up a prefix button if you had to say dial a nine before dialing the number. Uh, you also have an agent login, logout button, uh, as well as a cell phone button so you can transfer this call from your desk phone to your cell phone. Obviously we have the BLF buttons, which is good for presence. Uh, as well as pickup and speed dial. Um, so VLF can be used for all of those. Uh, park orbits, if you're using park, you can park people, it can unpark them through that button. Uh, if you'd rather intercom rather than make the call, you're intercoming to another extension, you can set up a button for that. Uh, there's a group pickup button. So if you're part of that group, uh, another phone is ringing, you'd be able to use this button to answer that other phone. And there's the LDAP button with your uh, directory access. Figuring buttons on your device helps you take control. So again, you're gonna be in the domain. You're gonna to go to advanced and buttons, and you're gonna choose the Cisco button profile. You can see down here when we get there, there are a few different uh, profiles for different phones. You'll choose the Cisco profile, and then you're gonna assign extensions or accounts to the parameter you'd like to monitor. So you can see on the right-hand side, we've got all these BLS set up for different extensions within the system as well as some private lines, and of course, any of those other buttons that I showed you, um, you would be able to uh, set up on here as well. Uh, the VLF, again, works as a universal button, um, so that's not only for monitoring other, other people, whether on the phone or not, but you can speed dial them by picking that, uh, hitting that button, and you can also pick up that line um, by hitting that button. As far as LAN provisioning goes and provisioning uh, your 8800 series phone, now we're back in the admin mode and you're gonna go to phones, LAN devices, the same place we went to and showed you earlier where we were actually be able to detect any of the uh, phones on the LAN. So you're back there, you should see those Cisco devices listed uh, under that configure phone page and you're just gonna click on setup and choose the domain and the extension you'd like to pair the phone to. So setup is just asking you, again, if it's a single tenant system, it's gonna be local host. If you have multiple tenants, this will be a drop down and show you the other tenants that are available to assign this phone to. And then once you're in that particular domain, you're gonna pick the extension that that phone's gonna work with. 
Cisco phone is then going to reboot and register to the PBX. Buttons are configured automatically by that button profile that we chose earlier. So basically there's success. Um, we've got uh, these guys set up with an extension uh, and everything else. And so that's the, that's the basics. Um, you know, the Cisco phones, again, we support them. It's pretty easy here to set them up, as you can see, setting up button profiles for them as well. I got one more slide here about licensing, and I know this is a little off topic as far as the uh, Cisco goes, but we did want to throw this in there because we have come up with some new licensing recently. So first of all, to get a license, you want to sign up and register. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, that's Godia.com, EN, register, uh, get in there and register and, and we can get you a license. Now the licenses now are based on concurrent calls. And what that means is you have unlimited extensions. So there's no restriction on how many extensions you can have um, because it's based on how many concurrent calls you've got going on. Any call counts as a concurrent call. So how many do you think are gonna be going on at any given moment? That's how you're gonna purchase the licenses, uh, not based on extensions. And then we do have a persistent license, which just means you're basically buying that license outright. You own that license. Um, and then the annual license is something that you're gonna pay for on a yearly basis, which will include the subscription. So that means you're getting any updates that come out during that time frame. With the persistent licenses, you can also put those on a subscription for 20% of the original cost per year. Those can be on a uh, prescription as, or subscription as well, um, so that if we do come up with uh, new versions and all that, you would receive those at no additional charge. We do have three different flavors of licenses, a standard pro and enterprise, and I've got a little chart up here um, showing you kind of what each one of these has. Uh, again, you can see up at the top, extensions are unlimited. But this will also tell you, you know, how many hunt groups you might be getting, paging accounts, service flags, conference rooms, trunks, all of that. Uh, there are limits um, to the standard and the pro, really no limits on the enterprise for any of those things. Um, if you all, you know, you can take a screenshot here, but if you need this chart, we can send it to you. Uh, and pricing as well, just uh, write to us at sales at and we're happy to help you out there. Another thing I wanted to mention, uh, we are going to be at the ChannelCon event, uh, the CompTIA ChannelCon event, which is happening from July 31st to August 2nd. We'll be in booth 1107. That's in Washington, D.C., and we encourage you all to come on down. Uh, and if you are there, please stop by the booth, say hello, and uh, we'll have some of these Cisco phones out there as well, uh, as well as others, and uh, hope to see you down there. And that basically concludes what we had for you today. So like I said, it was brief, but, uh, but powerful. Uh, if anybody has any questions, I'm going to ask you to use the chat um, button there on your uh, join me uh, bar that should be at the top of your screen. Uh, anybody has a question, um, we'll go ahead and read the question and give the answer. looks like I do have one already um, from Shalom. Uh, and he just said, basically, this is if the PBX is on the LAN. Our PBX is in a hosted server with a public IP. How would I provision or point the Cisco phone to the hosted Bodia? Just the IP address. Just the IP address. Is, of, is, the, of, the, of the PBX. Of the PBX, yeah. So basically you're just pointing it to the IP address of the uh, of the PBX and that's how you would do it if it's not on your LAN. And, and the PBX uh, can match the MAC address to that domain. And, and uh, I'm just hearing also, and the PBX can match the MAC address as well to that domain. Where in the phones do we put that in? Uh, so advanced network uh, TFTP. Okay, so if, if you're in the administrator side, um, you're gonna go to advanced, then network TFTP. And there you put the IP address. And that's where you're gonna put the IP address. Yeah, the server URL, basically. Which has to be an IP, they don't support fully qualified domain. Yeah, so it, it does not support an FQDN, a fully qualified domain name, it does have to be the IP address. Um, and, yeah. and this way there's no chance of, you know, a DNS server not working properly or whatever, you can just put in the IP and it'll point directly to that. Yeah, and once the phone goes to the PBX, it's gonna look at the MAC address and then assign it to the proper domain.
Okay, so Shalom is saying he has the newest Bodia in the drop down. There's no option for the 8800 in the list after Cisco. I'm, I'm right. On the drop down for uh, choosing the phone. For buttons? Yeah, are you talking about buttons there, Shalom? Or, oh, okay, he sees it now. <laughs> See it now, sorry, so that came back. Um, which firmware phones can use enterprise firmware or third-party call control firmware? I believe that's going to be the third-party call yeah. control being a multi-platform phone. That's basically what the multi-platform phone is saying is that it can work with third parties. So you're going to use the third-party call control as far as the firmware that's used on these phones. Any other questions, just throw them up there and we'll get them answered for you. Another question as far as the firmware, um, meaning the enterprise firmware does not work with Bodia? It, it has to be the, the third party. I believe it has to be the third party call control firm, firmware yeah, with these multi platform phones. Because that's going to be the one that works with any SIP endpoint, which of these are obviously flashed for SIP. Any other questions? I do want to let everybody know that we're going to go ahead and post this uh, to our YouTube channel. Um, and I strongly encourage everyone to go ahead and, and go there and subscribe. Um, you can see some past videos that we've done, some past webinars, uh, as well as this one. All right, I'm not seeing any other questions come up. I'm gonna go ahead and close this out, but if you do have any other questions, you can always reach us at 617-446-1399. Uh, just go to sales, or uh, this is Eric Altman, is my name, sales engineer here. You can go to my extension 451, or Hamlet Collado, extension 440. Feel free to contact us, or just drop an email to sales at bodia.com, and we're happy to uh, answer any questions that you might have and help you set this up. All right. Thank you, everybody, today. I uh, hope you have a, have a great day. Thanks again. We'll talk soon.